My name is Max Möller. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer and I work uh, for Avanade in Germany. You can reach me on Twitter or via my blog. And the last line is only a warning just in case of unpredictable background noise yeah, in a small flat and stay at home times. It can happen that my little daughter cries out. Today I want to show you um, about a Microsoft okay. Teams messaging extension, which is uh, search based in fact, the and the authentication method to access Microsoft Graph in the back. My scenario is uh, that I'm talking about some uh, documents that need a review. We can see this here in my small little document library. So I have some documents here that need a review and those uh, documents I want to communicate inside Teams and enable the review from that perspective. How does this work in Teams? I created a messaging extension as mentioned. You can fry it up here. This is a search-based scenario, I said, so it's quite a simple display. We can pick up now either a document or what we can also do, return back, and also do some filtering here. So that we only, and, and assuming we have uh, lots of documents here, we can also intercept and uh, do some search-based stuff here. and. Again, paste this in Teams. Now we have this adaptive card shared in our Teams channel and everyone having access to it would be able to either view our document or even put this on review. Yeah. Uh, it can adapt this by a small date and put this on review directly. And when we go in our document library, we can see that our document just got reviewed and also the next review is set to a date in the future. What we can additionally do um, is because uh, you might ask how to access these documents. I'm doing this with uh, the Graph API, but with cyber SharePoint access. So I need some information from where I get these documents. Um, so such a messaging extension can also be configured with some settings, and in my case here, I have a site ID and a list ID that point to that. So this was just a demonstration. Now let's check how does this work. First is the injection. So how uh, does this code get fired? This is done in the Teams manifest with a so-called compose extension. Um, what we have here um, is uh, on the one hand, we have a bot ID that uh, will be inserted. And um, two other things are interesting. So the setting can update configuration. And initial true says that this automatically executed. So this is what we have seen already. Once we click on the extension, we already get documents, not only when we search for something. Um, this is, uh, we see this uh, in the code later, how this is detected. The next thing is, of course, how to get the initial documents. This is executed in the so-called middleware in the um, Teams uh, in the Teams app, and this uh, middleware, this iMessaging extension middleware processor in the on query method is uh, communicating with the bot in the background. And here, what we first try to do is we try to get a user token. In my case, this was successful. And I will just uh, so that I forget to demonstrate how when it's not successful, I will catch this up in a minute. So uh, here we have a token. This is why I shortened the, the negative uh, token response here. I directly jump to where we get our documents and then we instantiate the graph controller, get our settings. What I've shown you, I do this in a really simple way in a JSON DB uh, option. Of course, in a productive scenario, you might do this different, but uh, just to show you how configuration is uh, done, I'm just retrieving the parameters. And finally, at the very end, in the second last line, uh, my controller retrieves the documents with, uh, in the background, a simple graph call. And then we have the documents. Alternatively, um, we had the search, uh, the filtering. In my case, it's more filtering because when, I, when you look in my code, you see that I'm taking the documents from the initial run in this document. So I'm not doing another server request in my case. Of course, I could do this, but just for simplicity reason, I take the original request 
and simply filter it by the string that I'm retrieving from search parameters. And finally, I will also use the documents, the items that I have, and then iterate them and transform them in I, on the one hand, uh, on the left side, you see the so-called preview uh, visualization. This is in the uh, in the overall result. And on the right side, you see the single adaptive card representation once I select one. And how this is achieved, this is by simply returning an adaptive card. And on the right hand, you see a bit shortened my adaptive card um, consisting of a body and actions. And on the left hand, you can see um, the preview, which is quite similar, but here in the search based scenario, you cannot modify this uh, in a real way. I'll show you some other examples at the end way how you can do this different. Um, and finally, I will put the pieces together in, a, in an attachments uh, object, and this is I will return as a result to my messaging extension where it will arrive. The settings um, you have seen. It's also quite simple. Therefore, we need two methods. Um, this is on the one hand on query settings URL. This is just returning finally the URL to my settings page, which is a small HTML page inside my solution. But I also have to return, of course, existing parameters. Like uh, if you already have configured uh, values, you need to return them. This is what I'm doing here in most of the parts of the code. And the second method, the on settings method, this is executed once the configuration is done and returned back. And in that case, I'm just simply saving uh, my parameters to my JSON DB simple configuration storage. The reviewed action, finally, um, we can make this quite short. This is what we also again need to check for the authentication and then we will finally take some parameters, uh, first the configuration again in a short way, and then we will only execute the update item method of my controller. And what I'm finally doing, and this is now I can jump back to my demo because this is what I missed to show you, is that I'm signing out the user. This is no production scenario, of course. This is just for demonstration purposes. And uh, when we go back and try this again, I just want to show you how this looks like when I have no token, when I'm not signed in, then I will get this. And once I just tap this up, then I'm signed in again. And now we see that we only re retrieve two documents because one was already reviewed. Yeah, this is quite clear. And to show uh, how this authentication works, my last two slides or demo is first, um, what I just showed, uh, yeah, I hide this in the last uh, screenshots of my code. Here I have the negative check of my token response. So if I don't have a token, then I will simply retrieve from my bot adapter a get signed in link and return this as a messaging extension result. And this is how I retrieve this window, what you've this pop up window, huh, what you have just seen. Now, the final question how this is configured. This is configured, um, of course, what you need. I showed this in the manifest already that you need an ID of your bot, and this is a, a bot adapter you need to configure in Azure. This is on the left side um, where you also have to put a messaging extension endpoint. This is a debug scenario here where I'm using ngrok for this IO, but you can also deploy this, of course, to an Azure web app for production scenarios. And at the very bottom, you can see the OAuth connection settings. And this connection setting you see on the right is here I put in my app registration value, so my client ID, my client secret, and the scope. And uh, behind the scenes, of course, I have requested the right graph permissions to write to SharePoint. And that's all how the authentication works together with um, this app. Now, uh, only some simple screenshots. Um, as I've seen, uh, I told you that it's not, uh, you cannot massively configure the UI in the search based alternative. Therefore, it's quite easy to implement as you have seen, but you can also create an action based alternative. And what I've done here is I'm presenting a grid and I was also, for instance, highlighting a document that is much uh, longer due for review. And also I can 
get input parameters. What you can see at the bottom that I could also request, for instance, some additional parameters, some comments for this specific review case. And I could also point this out in uh, the adaptive card as an additional parameter not coming directly from the document. And another option I recently presented in the SharePoint framework call is also quite similar in this action-based scenarios, for instance, developed with uh, SPFX as an alternative to the Yeoman Teams generator, which I was using here. Last not least, some resources. I've created a blog series on all on, on several authentication scenarios all around messaging extensions. Um, here you can see the link. And then uh, the whole code of this example and also of the other ones uh, is available on my GitHub and also on the Teams Dev Samples GitHub repository. That's from my side. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcus, for, for walking us through that. And